Science, Some really? water guns. Yeah, there's all kinds Did of stuff Did you bring out your there. super soaker? Are you ready I, to take a stand? I brought all of my personal ar archives. <laughs> yeah, my personal stash. I brought my Lloyd Bridges wetsuit. <laughs> I'll be ready. In the meantime, speaking of hot and grilling, uh, Jason Chaffetz is the chairman of the House <laughs> Oversight Committee. And, uh, Chairman, you're going to be grilling uh, James Comey later today. When you, were, when you heard him a couple of days ago, uh, with his 15-minute statement, it sure sounded like he was presenting the case to suggest charges, and then he made a turn. And were you as shocked as a lot of people? I was. I mean, listen to the fact pattern laid out by by the uh, director Comey, and clearly Hillary Clinton lied, misled the American public, uh, put people in in jeopardy, uh, took classified information and put it in a non-secure format. Anybody else out there, they would already have handcuffs on them and be in jail, yeah. and yet he came to the conclusion not to prosecute. I, there's, that's the disconnect. Director Comey, one of the things he said, carelessness, negligence, you wanted to get an answer as to what the difference is because the director frequently yeah. referred to intent. So do you think you're going to get a sufficient answer? What is the difference between carelessness and negligence? Exactly. I, that's what we want to understand because they're synonymous. And if you look at the, the statute, look at the law, it's crystal clear. And certainly the Department of Justice has prosecuted for far less than this. There is precedent. And, and uh, the, the director said there was no precedent. Well, he's setting precedent now. And that precedent is you mishandle classified information. We're not going to prosecute you. And I just worry that there's two sets of standards. That if your name is Clinton or you're part of the rich and powerful, hey, that, you know, Lady Justice takes off that blindfold. Because um, the average Joe, he'd be going to jail. Mm -hmm. Chairman, I was reading this morning that you guys have a long list of questions for him. What are some other questions? I know Clayton threw that one out. What are some other questions you have for him? Well, we want to put the meat on the bones. We want to have the, the answers to all the things he said because he laid out multiple times. Why, are the, why is the uh, attorney general not going to prosecute anybody else? Did they look at the Clinton Foundation? Um, what was the breadth and scope of that? Did they look at what Congressman Jim Jordan asked Secretary Clinton under oath? Because if she misled or lied in public, they're probably not going to prosecute that. But when you do it under oath, did the director look at that? Because clearly she said something is in direct contrast to what the FBI found. Yeah. Uh, Paul Ryan, uh, Speaker of the House, uh, has sent a letter to the Director of National Intelligence, uh, James Clapper, asking him to deny access for Hillary Clinton to get these uh, presidential, uh, you know, presidential candidate classified briefings. Do you think, given the fact that now we know that uh, she has been unreliable in keeping state secrets state secrets, do you think she should get the classified briefings? Well, look, the FBI is making that determination. That's a pretty serious authority to say that uh, she mishandles and is uh, careless with, uh, with classified information. Classified information is there for a reason. It puts people's lives in jeopardy if it gets out. And so do we entrust her to do that? I, I, I wouldn't. Um, and so the ultimate jury is the American people. But I think Paul Ryan is right in this case. What's next for, I mean, this is a broader question, too, about just security at this level. And Dana Perino last night on the, the Kelly file talked about that there's just a level of arrogance here, that if you're at a certain level that you can just decide what you want to do. She was offered the State Department email from the very beginning, never even set up the email account. Yeah. Should there be some sort of directive going forward to make sure that these things don't happen? She set up her own private domain on the exact same day that she started her Senate confirmation. That to me is intent that the director says was not there. The intent was to make sure that those emails that were going back and forth with her never saw the light of day. And, and that's, that's wrong on so many levels. And as a government employee, that's just not what you're supposed to do in the executive mm -hmm. branch. You know, Dana Perino also talked about how when she was, she had so much classified information in her brain, she said she just has it stored in a little compartment. And she said still to this day, she does not talk about that information because it was classified. And here we have someone running for president who was sharing this information. It could have been read by other people who were hacking into her emails. We still don't know it, at this point if that ever happened. Well, the FBI director said it, it might have happened. Exactly. And, but why did she put the country at risk? 
She did it for her own personal greedy uh, convenience. She didn't need to take that risk. This is dealing with people's lives. These people could die if this information got into the adversary's hand, and yet she took that risk repeatedly, not once it by a mistake. This happened over nearly four years. What a great responsibility. You know, when we go to the polls and we vote for you guys, yeah. for anyone serving our country, yeah. we keep that in mind. We need to keep that in mind that the people we're voting, they're putting our best interests and in, in, our children, their lives at risk when they share information like this. The voters are the ultimate jury. They get to make this decision because there's a pattern here with Hillary Clinton. She lies. She misleads. She'll do whatever she needs to do for political convenience. She did it in Benghazi. Yeah. She's doing it here at the emails. The American people got to make that decision. In a roundabout way, Congressman, the American people guess, get to pick the director of the FBI in a roundabout way, although not directly. Do you think that the director of the FBI did this politically? Well, I don't understand his conclusions. He has a great reputation. He's a man of integrity. Um, that's always what people say about him. But how do you come to this conclusion? And why, as the director of the FBI, do you actually go out and say that? The role of the FBI director is to gather the fact pattern and hand it to yeah. the prosecutor. Not say that it would be any, uh, any reasonable prosecutor would not do that. Every prosecutor I've spoken with would have prosecuted that. Well, sure, but do, do you think that because there is a political component to it, and that is if James Comey, you know, in the beginning when he said, the White House doesn't know what I'm about to say, nobody from the Department of Justice knows what I am about to say, don't you think if he would have suggested charges be brought against her, effectively, you were talking about a lady justice, he would have put his thumb uh, on the, you know, ag against her uh, on the scale and cost somebody the presidential election, and he just didn't want that burden. This, this is why we're going to have a hearing. We have to be able to ask him those direct pointed questions, and we'll just, you know, let's see if we get candid answers. Uh, and even one further question beyond Steve's question, which is the idea that we had Judge Pirro on the show last week. She says Comey would not want a constitutional crisis on her hand, and Hillary Clinton laid this bare a few months ago when she said, look, everyone in Washington knew about this, meaning. The White House knew about the this. President. And therefore, that's why Director Comey wouldn't want a constitutional crisis. It goes all the way up to the White House. Do you buy that argument? I, I think it's something worth exploring. I think those are le very legitimate questions. And, you know, the role in oversight, they don't give us handcuffs. I can't prosecute people. Uh, I can't indict people, but what I can do is help shine light on it. And that's what we're doing today and we will continue to do is to maximize the sunlight on this issue. It is of vital importance and it does, it, it is uh, of national importance. All right. All right. We'll be watching this morning, 10 o'clock this you. morning, a few more hours. Yes. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. All right. From Capitol Grill to the headlines with Heather. <laughs> good morning. Good, good morning. morning to all of you. Hope you're off to a good day. A couple of important headlines I want to bring you today that a lot of people are going to be talking about. Outrage now turning to protests overnight following a deadly police shooting. The victim's girlfriend live streaming the graphic aftermath. It shows 32-year-old Fernando Castile moaning and bleeding after a police officer opens fire during a traffic stop in Falcon Heights, Minnesota. He was